Okay, so um, this is a bunch of slides that I had posted on LinkedIn uh, some time ago. In fact, on this date, March 6, 2025. Um, and I also have these slides on Figshare and ResearchGate. Uh, so if you need to see them, um, you can, well, you can just Google this slide title here and, and you'll find it. All right, so if you're one of those who uh, came across these slides on LinkedIn and at the time they're not very clear, then this is now an opportunity for me to try to articulate and express orally um, what's going on here and maybe to clarify some things. Okay, so, all right, so what, what is this about? This is about um, what happens if you have a situation where you've bought an off-the-shelf imaging lens from a catalog and you have to now mount it in a lab bench um, relative to say an image sensor or a camera or if you have to align this imaging lens with respect to other lenses it could be say um, a microscope objective lens a tube lens and then a camera or any other situation so to be clear this is not uh, going to be about how to align what happens when you align one element so this is one element there's another element, there's another, another element, and another element. This is not about, I'm not going to be talking about aligning one element and the next and the next and the next. I'm talking about a fully assembled imaging lens comprising many elements that have already been assembled in a factory and you bought it off the shelf and now you want to align this assembly relative to another assembly or relative to, say, an image plane where an image sensor resides. What happens? Okay, so ordinarily you would um, maybe use some kind of a device like an autocollimator, right? And maybe you may, and use, usually autocollimators come with a, I forgot to draw a sketch, a projector here, that usually there's a, there's a light source that projects a crosshair, a target, that projects it out through and you let it go through your lens assembly and let it hit a mirror and let it re retro reflect back through the autocollimator and there's an eyepiece where there's another reticle and so the projected reticle and the eyepiece reticle must align right so that so you're zeroing the beam deviation in this case and to do that usually you are you first you first do not have the lens assembly. You first usually align your autocollimator relative to the mirror so that the mirror and autocollimator are collinear and um, parallel. And then you insert your lens assembly and then you kind of tilt the whole housing until the beam that comes back is zeroed uh, in the crosshair, usually, okay. But what if I told you that that's not quite the right way to do it? It, it might sound surprising to you. And um, you may think, oh, what's Ronnie talking about? He doesn't understand lens assemblies and things like that. He's just a lens designer. Okay. Well, it's because I've been doing a lot of lens design. And a lot of lens designers do this, right? They do they do tolerancing analysis. And it's because we've done we've gone through the entire exercise of doing tolerancing analysis and lens design that we know that actually it is not feasible to align a lens assembly, a fully assembled lens system, in the manner that I just described, where you're zeroing the beam deviation. Because guess what? Zero beam deviation done in this way does not correlate to high image quality. Does not necessarily correlate to high image quality. And I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. So um what happens? Um all right, so this is basically saying what I just said. And if you want to know a little bit more about what I just said, you can look up these references. Again, you can Google my slides, download it, and look for these references. Conrad, wrote a uh, um, paper here called Decentral Lens Systems. And then Warren J. Smith, in his second edition of Modern Optical Engineering, on page 20, talks about it as well. So what happens is this. Um, what happens is... In most mass-produced imaging lenses, the way they assemble the lens elements inside the housing is not by purposely aligning each element centered to the next element 
an x element. In other words, each element is not centered, not necessarily purposely centered relative to the other elements. There's no optical axis. What happens is you normally just drop the lenses inside, put it inside, using gravity to sit it down, then take a retainer, and lock it inside, and glue it, and that's it. Okay, because that's cost effective. Imagine having to align every element inside a housing for 1,000 housings. That's going to be very expensive, and normally that's not done. So what happens when you when you assemble a lens system by just dropping all the lenses inside between spacers? What happens is each element is not necessarily aligned to the next element. There can be wedge errors for each element. There can be stack up, and there can be all kinds of um, tolerances happening in a random fashion. So ultimately, if you are assembling 1,000 imaging lenses, you have 1,000 Monte Carlo samples. So what happens if we perform a, a Monte Carlo simulation of 1,000 assembled lenses, specifically this double gauss here, and calculate the beam deviation angle of the axle beam and try to try to plot that in a scatter plot versus um, image quality is there a correlation right why do I talk about beam deviations because the only way your axle beam can go back from the mirror into the auto collimator is if the axle beam has zero beam deviation because why because prior to putting the lens assembly here in a space you would have aligned the auto collimator relative to this mirror so that they are, you know, orthogonal or actually parallel, or so that the axis of the auto collimator is orthogonal to the mirror and the beam comes back. So if you put a lens assembly inside, the only way your crosshair projects out and comes back without deviation is if the axial beam comes out with zero angle of incidence under the mirror. Okay, and we can simulate all that. So this this is this is what happens, okay? This is what happens, and this is just uh, saying here. This is just saying what happens if um, okay. So in my Monte Carlo simulation, I impose element surface tilts. So each each surface has a wedge uh, this way and this way within plus or minus one arc minute. Each element can descend to plus or minus 0.2 millimeter. And there are each element can tilt plus or minus one arc minute. And one arc minute is one sixtieth of a degree. Okay. Uh, and then I'm also going to do something else. I'm going to take this entire lens assembly. Imagine that's in the housing, and that whole housing tilts as well. Why do I do this? Why I do it is because I'm going to simulate what happens if, in addition to putting in all the elements dropped in. In a Monte Carlo fashion, you as the uh, assemble uh, as the optical engineer in a lab trying to align this entire housing relative to a a mirror. Okay, we we are we are assuming that the mirror uh, mirror position is exactly where the image sensor would lie. We just assume that that's that's what it is. That's that's why you've got a mirror there because eventually you want to put you've got a mirror and auto collimator aligned to each other and then you put the lens assembly in and then you take out uh, the mirror and put the image sensor there and presumably your image sensor will be aligned to your housing that's the that's the condition I'm trying to um, uh, kind of simulate here right okay so um so I'm imagining a situation in a Monte Carlo ana tolerancing analysis a situation where you've assembled the lenses in a Monte Carlo fashion and then you take the whole housing and you're trying to do tilts of the whole housing because you're trying to zero the beam deviation coming back for the collimator. Okay, all right. So um, hopefully that's clear. So that, so what what happens if you do that? Okay. So um, on the left side plot here, uh, this is a scatter plot of one thousand Monte Carlo imaging lenses. This lens here, right? One thousand of that lenses. Uh, where I plot after doing a tolerancing analysis, um, subject to those to these tolerances, I plot as a scatter plot on the x and the x-axis RMS plot radius, 
the, the on-axis spot radius versus beam deviation. Okay, so what are we seeing? 1,000 dots here. Each dot is a lens, a assembled lens, right? On average, you can see some kind of linear correlation between image quality, which is RMS spot size, versus beam deviation on average. Because obviously, if every lens element inside are, is aligned to one another in the housing, if you take the whole housing and you tilt it plus or minus 10 degree in random fashion, you get that line, right? You get that line. Every time you tilt it, image quality is bad and the beam deviation is bad. But what's happening in reality is that in the lens housing, each element has its own wedge error and decentering tolerances. So the 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 y the the y spread of the spots for the entire line, the, each each y spread here is a result of elements having random perturbations. But the envelope, the line, is because of the whole housing tilt. And that is why some lens, some some assembled lenses have large RMS uh, spot radius and large beam deviation, but some have small beam deviation, right? Some have for this RMS spot size very large deviation and some have small deviation. So you can't really say that there's a high degree of correlation between image quality and uh, beam deviation. But you can see on average there is here because I've got a very coarse housing tilt. That's kind of simulating the situation where you've just walked into the lab, you've just assembled your mirror, which represents your uh, image plane, where the image sensor will reside eventually. And then you put an autocollimator and you align the autocollimator with respect to the mirror. And then you take a lens system assembly and you put it in between and you begin, and let's say you begin with a very large tilt. Now you go, okay, that's, that's, that's obviously too, much, too large of a tilt, and you untilt that, uh, and then, you, and then you, you think it's aligned, and you take another lens, you put it inside, and you untilt it. So that's the situation, right? You've got a large housing tilt. On the right side plot is the same situation, except same data, data except, that I'm, except, that, except that I am plotting on the y-axis, again, axial beam deviation, but on the x-axis, the um, MTF, the on-axis MTF. And you can see on average, obviously, uh, high MTF, low beam deviation, but there's always a y-spread, right? Therefore, some lenses, even with a high MTF, some lenses have high higher beam deviation, and some lenses have lower beam deviation, right? Okay. What happens if I reduce the housing tilt? Now you get this. I still I have 1,000 plots of 1,000 lens systems inside. And in addition to every element having its own perturbation in the in the housing, the whole housing is also tilting randomly, but within a plus minus one degree housing tilt. That 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 is supposed to simulate the situation where uh, you are again in the lab, autocollimator, mirror, and now you are tweaking the lens housing in a very small angular fashion because you're attempting to zero. The return crosshair with the eyepiece crosshair, right? You're trying to zero that, but then it's weird. Let's say, let let's say you you have the ability to judge image quality in addition to judging the zero deviation, right? You you will notice something. You will notice that hey, why is it that some lenses have low beam deviation, but uh, this amount of RMS spot spies. And some lenses have, for the same RMS spot size, large angular beam deviation, right? Sometimes I'm, I can zero down the beam and have very small RMS spot size, but sometimes I can I, I can have a very, very uh, a large spot size, but zero down the beam. Sometimes I can have a uh, very small RMS spot size, but have a large beam deviation. So in this cluster of 1,000 Monte Carlo samples here, there's virtually no correlation between image quality and beam deviation. 
because of the noise involved uh, uh, in the each individual element having its own random tolerance. So you're now in the noise of those tolerances. So you, you can no longer correlate beam deviation with image quality. You have, if what this is implying is, if you want a good alignment, you should be looking at image quality um, alone. You should be tilting the lens housing to maximize image quality, not necessarily to minimize beam deviation. Two different things there. On the right side plot, I have the same thing. Now, not same data points, but now I'm plotting again beam deviation versus axial MTF, and you can see the same same thing again. Why is it that sometimes I've got a lower beam deviation but a lower MTF, and sometimes I've got a high MTF but with a higher beam deviation, right? Okay, so you're in a noise here. What this is saying again is. You, you should be tilting the lens housing to maximize image quality, not to minimize beam deviation. And this is what this whole thing is about. And uh, this, this, this stuff here is just saying, repeating what I just said earlier on. All right. So, um, uh, okay. And this is basically my last slide here before the, before the thank you note, which is saying that um, if you want to know more about uh, how I mean this very example I discuss in further detail in this book Modern Classical Optical System Design, um, which I think you would be able to. Un unfortunately, okay, the whole chapter one of this book is available free, but I don't think I explained that in chapter one. I think I explained that analysis, this specific analysis of Monte Carlo, in chapter three, which. Unfortunately, it's not free. You have to you have to buy the book. But I do explain the rudiments of Monte Carlo simulation and statistical analysis uh, in this SPIE Spotlight book, which you can get from SPIE. All right. Okay. So um, I hope it's clearer, and um, I wish you all the best. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye now.